Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Does the Brain Adapt to Blindness? Read by Miranda Wilson Abstract You hear footsteps behind you. They're getting louder. You turn around quickly. Your friend was trying to sneak up on you. How did you know they were there? Your brain was hard at work. It took clues from your senses and turned those clues into information. But not everybody's senses work the same way. When someone is blind or deaf, their brains learn to use the other senses differently. We were interested in knowing how blind people use sounds to learn about moving objects. We found that people who became blind during early childhood were better at following sounds than sighted people. Both blind and sighted people tracked moving sounds in a similar way, but blind people were much better at ignoring background noise. Introduction. How can you tell if something is moving? You learn about your environment using your senses. Imagine a busy ball game in your playground. Maybe you feel a friend brush past you. Perhaps you see the ball flying over her head. You might hear it bouncing away, too. Noticing and following things that move is an important survival skill. We are so used to using our senses that it can be easy to forget about how complicated they are. From the moment you are born, your brain is hard at work. It has to learn to connect the dots between the messages sent by your nerves and the meaning of those messages. Warm, cold, loud, quiet, there is a lot to learn. You learn to use your senses through experiences. As you try new things, your brain forms new neural pathways. Sometimes a person loses a sense in early childhood. Then their brain develops in a dramatically different way. Parts of the brain that are usually used for the lost sense will begin to respond to the remaining senses. This is neuroplasticity, your brain's ability to reorganize itself. We wanted to know how the brain responds to moving sounds. Does it work differently for sighted people than for people who have been blind since early childhood? Does neuroplasticity make blind people better with moving sounds? That's what we wanted to find out. All of our senses are useful for navigating the city safely. For blind people, their sense of touch and sense of hearing are especially important. Crossing signals use sound to announce when the light changes. Textured sidewalks help a blind person move around using a long cane. What senses help you find your destination? In the photo, a blind person is walking on the sidewalk using a cane. In the foreground, you can see the textured parts of the sidewalk in yellow. And on the right side of the image, you can see a crossing signal. Methods. Our experiment tested how people separate a moving sound from background noise. Your brain often has to separate important details from distractions. It is easy to listen to someone talk in a quiet room, but hard to listen when many people are talking at once. We recruited eight sighted participants with normal vision and eight early blind participants. We mixed a recording of a sound moving from one side to the other with random bursts of static noise. Participants listened to the mixture of noise and sounds. They tried to tell what direction the sound was moving in. We used a mathematical model to help us identify how they were doing the task from the data. The technique lets us learn a lot of useful information, but it requires a lot of data to work. Each participant did the test 6,000 times. We owe them a big thank you. Results. Sighted and blind participants seemed to process sound movement in the same way. They could both figure out the direction of the moving sound source. But early blind participants could do this at a much lower volume. Sighted participants tended to mix up the bursts of noise with the moving signal more often. On average, sighted participants needed the signal to be three times as loud as the noise. Early blind participants could detect the signal when it was half that loud. Here in Figure 1, you can see participants listened to a sound and tried to figure out what direction the sound was moving. 
The dots show how much louder the sound needed to be compared to the background noise for a participant to get the right answer. On the x-axis of the graph, you can see the sighted participants on the left as orange dots and the early blind participants on the right in purple dots. On the y-axis, you can see the volume of the sound in decibels. Looking at the graph, did sighted or blind participants need the sound to be louder? Discussion. Our results suggest that early blind people are very good at tuning out background noise. We can guess this is probably true for people born blind too. This might be because they have lots of practice using sound to identify motion. Another reason may be neuroplasticity. The brain does a lot of reorganizing itself during early childhood. Maybe parts of the brain that are normally used for vision get used for hearing instead. When a person loses a sense, they do not suddenly receive super senses. It can be frustrating for a blind person when people assume that. Being blind doesn't mean they will have an amazing sense of smell or hearing. It is a myth that the loss of one sense makes the others stronger. Blind people have the same kind of ears as sighted people, so they aren't any better at hearing quiet sounds. However, they do learn to expertly use sound to navigate the world. So, there is a bit of truth in the myth. The brain does learn how to use the other senses more skillfully. It is amazing how the brain can adapt. Good news! There are many other ways that people can improve their ability to understand sound. For example, musicians learn to hear when notes are even slightly out of tune. Conclusion People have all sorts of different abilities and challenges. You can help make the world a more welcoming place for everyone. Here are a couple of ideas. Add alt text when you share images online. Then someone using a screen reader can enjoy them too. Call ahead to check whether a movie theater has audio descriptions available. You don't need to wait for your blind or low vision friends and family to point out when something isn't accessible. You can be an advocate for accessibility. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal PNAS, published on November 28, 2023. Research conducted by Wunju Park and Ayuni Fine from the Department of Psychology at the University of Washington. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.